Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dee Reinhardt. I am your host today for our Workplace Skills webinar. Workplace Skills, do you have the skills that your new employer wants? Let's move on to our first slide. Today we're going to talk about attendance and self-presentation, career advancement, and communication. First one is attendance and self-presentation. So what we want to do is talk about here are different things that have to do with getting to work and being there and staying there. So our first slide is about attendance. What happens if you have car trouble? Do you want to call your office and let them know about your situation so that they understand what's going on and let them know that you understand the importance of your attendance? Even though you might not be there on time, you took the time to call to let them know before you were going to be late. If you have a history of arriving to work on time and returning from breaks on time, they should understand what's going on. The next thing you need to do is to decide on if you will change a tire or fix the car problem right now or get a different ride to work. You could ride the bus or ask a friend, neighbor, or coworker for a ride to work. But make sure that your appearance, your appearance is professional when you arrive at work. This means that you may need to change your clothes if you had to do something to your car, and then change back into your work clothes if that's what you cho chose to do. If you aren't at work, your work is not getting done. Your company is not generating the revenue that it could for the day. You want to make sure that your attendance is timely. Understanding work expectations for arriving on time to work, taking and returning from breaks on time, and calling supervisors prior to being late. This is a very important part. A couple of things that you can do to make sure that you can get to work on time is make sure that you get to bed on time the night before. Now, we all know there's special occasions, like maybe the Cubs make it to the World Series. Holy cow, that would be an all-out historical vacation day for everybody the next day. But maybe you need to lay out your clothes. Maybe you need to make sure where your car keys are, that your phone is plugged in. Make sure that everything is planned out for the day before, especially if you have family, you need to plan for them as well. Be comfortable while you're sleeping. Set your alarm for 30 minutes before you need to get out of bed, especially if you like to hit that snooze. If you usually set your alarm to play music, you might want to change it to play the alarm itself, but force yourself to get up out of bed and turn off the radio. Wake up in the morning, take a shower, get dressed, watch the clock, listen to the traffic reports. Make sure that you leave on plenty of time, uh, taking into account the weather or or any traffic jams. And if you use public transportation, make sure that you're leaving plenty of time for that. Take a test run before you go to a new job in case you need to plan a different route. You also want to make sure that you arrive at work in enough time to get punched in, get your things put away, and be out on the floor wherever you need to be so that you can be there ready to work when it's time for you to work. Now we've got a couple of links, and I think um, Chelsea's put those into the chat pod for you. They are also on the page itself. Let's take a poll question here. So take a look at the poll question, and then give us your answers. All right, looks good. It looks like we've got a lot of answers here that are the right answer. And as you can tell, that first one probably isn't the best option. Nobody answered it. So we've got a really smart audience with us today. Let's hide this poll question. On to the next slide. Working in certain industries may be stress more stressful than others. You may feel overloaded with work. One of the first professional skills you need to use to demonstrate is self-control, even though you might feel really stressed out. Maintain your composure and keep a positive attitude. Take a step back and think about the priority and order in which to complete your tasks. 
One way to maintain a positive attitude is to think about each task as a goal. Every time you mark one of those tasks off your list, you are moving forward. Take pride in your work this way, and it will also help you maintain a positive attitude. Self-presentation is a combination of your appearance and your demeanor. How professional are you? The way you present yourself is important if the, in the business world. Clothing pressed, glance in the mirror, do you have pets, keep the hair off of you at home. Make sure that you are maintaining that professional demeanor. Dress appropriately for your occupation and its requirements. Categories are business casual, business coat and tie, business formal. Understand which is the appropriate appearance that impacts your culture at your workplace. And make sure that you maintain your personal hygiene. Demonstrate self-control means that you're able to keep your composure in very difficult situations. And substance abuse actually falls in here. You want to try to avoid any addictive activities that could interfere with your productivity at work and could ultimately end in termination from your job. Should you find yourself using or abusing substances, contact a trusted friend to get help. And there are a number of resources available in all of the local communities to help you kick any of those substance abuse problems. You also want to maintain a positive attitude. You can do that by projecting a professional image of yourself and your organization. A positive attitude, taking pride in your work and the work of the organization. Listening is just as important as eye contact. You want your coworkers to take you seriously and respect you. If you don't look the part, that may not happen. In summary, professionalism is how you present yourself, the way you speak, your appearance, your subject knowledge, and how you handle interaction. Let's do a lo another poll question here. One of the points on this screen says prioritize your tasks. A lot of times you're, you might have more than one boss. In that situation, you need to let each of the bosses know what it is that you've been assigned so that you can have their help in helping you prioritize your tasks. So that's just a suggestion. Say, with, go in with a list and say, this is what I need to do, and this is who I've been asked to do it by. Help me decide what you need me to do first. Let's hide this poll question. And the next slide is about self-presentation. Again, it's about how you present yourself, the way you speak, your appearance, your subject knowledge, and how you handle your interactions with others. Make sure that what you look like on the job is what your job wants you to look like. So in summary, we want to talk about attendance as the dependability to keep an organization running smoothly, and your professionalism is how you present yourself and how you handle interactions with others. Our next topic Can you, with your current skill set, and impact an employer? Do you have a willingness to learn? Are you willing to try new things? Are you adaptable? Will you build your skill set to be prepared for a job in the future? What are additional skills you have gained through volunteer activities? Understanding these terms will help you understand what you need to do. If you demonstrate an interest in learning, it means that you are taking an interest in your personal learning and development. You seek feedback from multiple sources about how to improve and develop. You modify your behavior based on that feedback or self-analysis of past mistakes. Participating in training means that you take steps to develop and maintain your knowledge, skills, and the expertise necessary to achieve positive results. You participate fully in relevant training programs and actively pursue other opportunities to develop knowledge and skills. Anticipate changes in work. This is not only work demands, but you search for and participate in assignments or training that address these changing demands. 
you treat unexpected circumstances as opportunities to learn. And you want to identify career interests. Take charge of your personal career development by identifying occupational interests, strengths, options, and opportunities. You make insightful career planning decisions based on integration and consideration of others' feedback, and you seek out additional training to pursue career goals. Suggest webinars or training sessions or opportunities that you might want to participate in so that you can show your supervisors and your superiors the fact that you do want to continue learning. When I worked for my previous employer, I, ten, I, I attended as many training classes as they would allow me to do. I kept a log of all the seminars, conferences, and trainings. If there were certificates issued, I copied them for inclusion in my HR file. One of the reasons I do what I do today is because I embraced social media when it came onto the forefront of marketing tactics. And so I earned my social media strategist certificate while I was on a previous job. Look at another poll question here. We have some good answers here. I noticed that the plumber and the line cook have some low answers, but there are ways to advance on both of those. You can be a line cook, then you could become a sous chef, then you could become the master chef. Then maybe you could even have your own television program. So there's all kinds of ways to advance in all of these fields. Let's hide this poll and go on to the next slide. Employee ability and career development helps you identify and demonstrate positive work behaviors and personal qualities needed to be employable. You develop a personal career plan to meet career goals and objectives. You demonstrate skills related to seeking and applying for employment to find and obtain a desired job. You maintain a career portfolio to document your knowledge, skills, and experience in your career field. You demonstrate skills in evaluating and comparing employment opportunities in order to accept employment positions that match career goals. You recognize and act upon requirements for career advancement to plan for continuing education and training. And you continue professional development to keep current on relative trends and information within the industry. You examine licensing, certification, and credentialing requirements at the national, state, and local levels to maintain compliance with industry requirements. You examine entrepreneurship opportunities as an option for your career planning. Illinois WorkNet has an entire quadrant devoted to job search and career planning and development. If you're not already using the tools on Illinois WorkNet, you should begin by signing up for a WorkNet account. If you are watching this webinar because of a news item that you received, because of your account, I am preaching to the choir. If Illinois WorkNet doesn't offer enough resources for you, one of our favorite tools to suggest is the gcflearnfree.org slash career. It has an entire host of online training courses to help you beef up your skills, including software and job search. Now, having an entrepreneurial spirit is going to help you achieve a positive career path. When you think like an entrepreneur, you are creative. You keep going in the face of hardship, and you have social skills to build great teams. You don't need to start a business to be an entrepreneur, but you need to think like one to make it the upper echelons of corporate structures. So here's the top 10 tips on advancing your career, and they include talk to your boss. Sit down and have a very direct and pointed conversation with him about where you're going him or her, about where you're going and what you can do to help meet the company goals, as well as your own career goals. Ask for more work. Volunteer to help out in other departments. Become cross trained. Volunteer for boards if you are if your career set is set on something beyond doing what you're doing in your present position. Seek out opportunities to volunteer or serve on advisory boards. Sharpen your people skills. Strong interpersonal skills play a crucial role in gaining the respect of your boss and coworkers. Be innovative. Never be afraid to think outside the box and put your business acumen to work. Find a mentor. Develop mentoring relationships either inside or outside of your company. 
Recent studies have shown that four out of five promotions are influenced by a mentor higher up in the company. Mentors are also great sources of information and career guidance. Sell yourself. Learn the fine art of self-promotion. If you have had major accomplishments or created successful programs, make sure people know about it. Keep learning. A proven way to advance in your career is to be continually acquiring new knowledge. Stay on top of trends and developments. Expand your network. This is a huge thing. Make sure that you're joining professional organizations, attending industry conferences, or even volunteering. The more people who are aware of your strengths strengths and abilities, the better your choices of hearing about new opportunities that might arise. And last but not least, build your reputation. In business, your reputation is the most valuable thing you own. Make sure that you make sure, make sure that you are dependable, professional, and cooperative. Act and look the part and make a name for yourself as you're attending those conferences, delivering speeches, or writing articles. Great leaders are individuals who are passionate about and confident in the work they do. They inspire others to do the same in the process. Leaders get to a goal through ensuring their team is the best they can be. As a great manager, how many progeny do you have? Have you trained your successor? In, in doing so, you may be able to employ some of the following. Encourage self-assessment. This means helping an individual or an employee identify their skill deficiencies. Elicit feedback from multiple perspectives, as we've talked about in other slides, and work with mentors who can give you specific constructive feedback on your performance. You want to enhance your skills on the job. Provide opportunities for skill development. Plan for and seek out developmental opportunities and stretch assignments that simultaneously develop you and the organization so that they can reach their goals. You want to promote training. We've talked about that. You want to support learning. We've talked about that. Express confidence that employees will be able to learn a new procedure or skill. Prepare for the future. Anticipate future changes in work tasks due to changing economies or political climates. And identify career issues. This pr helps you provide career advice, help employees identify career problems, including lack of advancement, interpersonal conflicts, and burnout. Help them identify career paths and promotion opportunities in the organization. So a big question, and let's, let's do it by a show of hands. Do you have or are you a mentor? Good. So we have a few people in the audience that are or have a mentor. So they understand the value of working with a mentor to help them promote their own career or that of the person that they are working with. All right, let's, let's take a look at um, Let's take a look at a poll question here. What are some of the ways that you've used to your own career? Excellent. Looks like everybody is doing some good work on making sure they're, they're advancing their careers. Let's hide this poll. Some things that you want to remember here. Career development will help you achieve goals and move up the ladder in your chosen career field. Will you be able to showcase how you met this particular criteria with an employer through your actions or examples? Communication. I love this next slide. 
are you sure what you are saying to the people with whom you work is being understood? Sometimes somebody might just look at you with that blank cloud up above their head, and you can just tell that what you said didn't make it through in the right fashion to that person's brain. Listening. Listening receives, attends to, interprets, understands, evaluates, and responds to verbal messages and other cues. Pick out important information in verbal messages. Accurately recall and summarize information. Understand complex instructions. Appreciate feelings and concerns of verbal messages. Two-way communication practices meaningful two-way communication, meaning that you speak clearly, you pay close attention, you seek to understand others, you listen attentively, you clarify information, and you attend to the nonverbal cues and respond appropriately. Raise your hand. Who remembers the telephone game where you listen and repeat until it goes around the circle? Oh, yeah. So sometimes you get some pretty far out returning messages, right? Am I right? It's, it's what you sent out there just doesn't come back the right way. So being able to communicate in any field is about understanding what your customer wants or needs and what you need from them. If you would like to assess your listening skills, check out uh, McGraw-Hill self-assessment on listening skills. And I think that's the link that Chelsea just put in the chat pod. They assess your listening skills based on avoiding interruption, postponing evaluation, showing interest, maintaining interest, and organizing information. It took me about three minutes to take the assessment and about 10 to read the results. So make sure you got about 15 or 20 minutes to take care of this. So let's look here. Good answers. One of the biggest things about overcoming an objection or overcoming an angry or upset customer is kind of the same thing that you do on social media. Don't engage them. Don't make them, don't anger the situation. Don't uh, make it stronger or harder. Just listen, express sympathy, make sure that you're maintaining the eye contact. It's all a great thing to do. ways that we communicate with people. You can participate in group or team discussions. You can engage in you engage in conversations with coworkers, supervisors, and clients. You express or present your information to individuals or groups taking into account the audience and the nature of the information. You provide information, you speak using common English conventions or whatever language you're working in, and you make all of these things in a, in a verbal and a nonverbal expression because you're, when you're speaking, you're using those nonverbal skills as well. You can have a two-way conversation building on information obtained during the conversation. Rajesh from the Big Bang Theory. Who knows who I'm talking about with Rajesh from the Big Bang Theory? Raise your hand. He's one of my favorite characters on that show. All right. Rajesh from the Big Bang Theory couldn't talk to women unless he had had a cocktail. So knowing how to speak and when to speak is an important item. Persuasion and influence is something that you need to do to present your thoughts and ideas. You can gain commitment and ensure support for proposed ideas. You support your, your idea with data and research personal versus professional opinion. A skilled conversationalist can successfully engage others in brainstorming and conflict resolution. 
You can use communication constructively to promote goals, but not to gossip or cause harm. And you want to make sure that you exhibit public relations skills to increase internal and external, external customer client satisfaction. And your tone of voice says a whole lot. You want to project warmth, confidence, or delight. Now, I speak publicly all the time. I never stop getting nervous before I'm about to do a presentation. There are a few things that I've changed over time to help my pre presentations go more smoothly. Some of the tips are included in this article, which I think that Chelsea may have already put up there. Uh, but you want to plan appropriately. Now, when I was in junior high, I had a teacher, and he gave us this nine, uh, the nine Ps. It's an alliteration. It's, it's called Prior Proper Planning Prevents Poor Performance at Peak Panic Periods. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this into the chat pod so that you've got it for down the road. But it was one of the things that I remember from junior high that was that pretty impressive. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that it, it really makes that planning um, do something good for you. So let me grab, let me grab the link to and po post that in here. Now this article talks about being able to think on your feet and being able to answer last minute questions. Not all public speaking is scheduled, so you can make great impromptu speeches by having some ideas and mini speeches prepared. It also helps you have a good, thorough understanding of what's going on in your organization and industry. You want to practice. You have to speak in front of people and be able to speak well, so it, the more you practice, the better you become. You might want to join a group like Toastmasters. You want to engage with your audience, and you want to ask leading questions, speak with your purpose, and slow down. Don't just read items verbatim. Try to work with keywords on cue cards or memorize your speech. Now, sometimes when you memorize, it sounds like you're memorizing. Sometimes when you're reading, it sounds like you're reading. You also want to pay attention to body language. Stand up straight. How many of you just sat up straight in your chair? Raise your hand if you just sat up straight in your chair. No, I was the only one? Okay. Oh, a couple people did. All right. <laughs> um, look people in the eyes. Smile. Don't lean on one leg or on the podium. And don't cross your arms to close off yourself from the audience. Think positively. Tell yourself that you will do well. Use positive reinforcement enforcement or affirmations before you begin. Cope with your nerves. Deep breathing slows your heart rate down and helps you feel more relaxed. Even if it is a large crowd, focus on one face at a time. Afterward, watch recordings to see if there is something upon which you might improve. If you speak well in public, it can help you get a job or a promotion. It can help raise awareness for your team or your organization, and it might even educate others. The more you push yourself to speak in front of others, the better you'll become and the more confidence you'll have. Because you cannot see the other person, you must be especially careful about how you handle a phone conversation, especially with someone new who might not know your personality quirks. Phone etiquette is very important, and the topic depends upon the type of customer service that you're doing. If you are in a call center, there are guidelines to which you must adhere. If you're working at a carry-out pizza place, your customer service will depend upon you getting the order correct and providing the right cost and delivery or pickup time to the customer. In general, several key components come into play. Diction and tone. People need to understand you. Not everyone will speak the same language, so you may need to speak more slowly, more clearly, you may need to repeat yourself, or you may need to ask a caller to repeat themselves. Because you are not speaking face-to-face, -face, your tone is how someone will interpret your words. Unless you know someone personally, you should maintain a neutral or a positive tone. Be polite. Ask someone if they are able to hold. 
don't just say, hold please. If you don't know the answer to a question or have to reference something out of the reach of the phone, ask someone if they have time to hold. If not, ask for their number and give them a time frame for a return call from you. And then call them back. The golden rule applies here. Treat others as you want to be treated. If you need to transfer a caller, know how to complete the task. Let the caller know you are what you're doing, and if possible, stay with the call until someone answers. Listening skills. Are you noticing a theme here? It is difficult to hear what someone is saying if you are speaking at the same time. It is compounded when using a telephone for that reason. Employ the active listening skills. Wait until someone is finished speaking before you begin. And if you're interested in learning more about proper phone etiquette, check out the link that Chelsea put in the chat pod, and it's also on the slide. So when you download the slides, you will have it. Body language. This means a lot of different things here. Eye contact, maintaining eye contact. Facial expression. Do you smile when you converse with others? Do you use expressions that show that you're emotionally present and filled with interest? Do you maintain good posture? Do you use listening cues such as nodding? Do you use a, an appropriate handshake or pat on the back or shoulder? In certain work environments and cultures, touch is not appropriate, so you need to be aware of that as well. The intensity. Is your communication over the top and melodramatic, or are you just comfortable enough? Is your timing proper? Is there an easy flow of information back and forth? You're not rushed with what you're trying to share. Do you use sounds to indicate that you are attending to the other person? such as ah, uh, um, oh, used along with eye and facial gestures, communicate understanding and emotional connection. These sounds can convey interest, understanding, and compassion. You can stand an appropriate distance from the other person. Consider the context of the situation. And some situations are more formal than others. And cultures consider space differently between them and others. So there's a nonverbal communication guide that Chelsea put in the chat pod. It's not always what you say, it's how you are saying it with all of the nonverbal cues that are listed on the slide. You may be familiar with advice on how to sit in a certain way, steeple your fingers, or shake hands just so in order to appear confident or assert dominance. But the truth is that these tricks aren't likely to work unless you tr feel truly confident and in charge. That's because you can't control all of the signals you're constantly sending off about what you're really thinking and feeling. And the harder you try, the more unnatural your signals are likely to come across. This quote is attributed to many people, but the eyes are the window to the soul rings very true with being able to gain clues to what someone is saying to you. Who agrees that written communication is often the most misinterpreted form of communication? Raise your hand if you think so. All right. Because there is no way to read the verbal tones or body language, it very often is totally misinterpreted. Be careful how you write an email or a text unless you know, unless you know for sure that the person reading it will interpret your message the way you intended it to be understood. Technology. When you interact and collaborate with your peers or others, employing a variety of digital environments and media, this is how you complete your workplace project. You want to communicate information and ideas effectively and to multiple audiences using a variety of media and formats. You want to contribute to project teams to produce original works or solve problems. 
reading and comprehension. Select and employ appropriate reading and communication strategy, strategies to learn and use technical concepts and vocabulary in practice. Demonstrate use of the concepts, strategies, and systems for obtaining and conveying ideas and information to enhance communication in the workplace. Use correct grammar, punctuation, and terminology to write and edit documents. Develop formal and informal presentations using appropriate media to engage and inform audiences. These days, you're able to do almost everything you need to do from a smartphone, right? Raise your hand if you use your phone to talk, text, email, Facebook, chat, or even video chat. I know I use my phone for almost everything. And it's just a, a matter of making sure that what you're typing on that screen or in that email or in that letter is going to maybe be able to be understood by the person reading it. So let's take a look here at our last poll question. All right, looks like everybody's got some great thoughts here on what's appropriate to deal. And making sure that you're using your communication properly is a big tool in all of the workplace skills that you want to use. When you gather and disseminate information, you're continually gathering data from diverse sources to determine what information employees need to perform their work. And you want to make sure that if you're sharing information, you give it to everyone in a timely and efficient manner. You want to keep employees infor informed. Keep them well informed through a variety of means. Group meetings, individual meetings, targeted written communications, highlight the information, and avoid flooding employees with irrelevant information. You want to make sure that everything is up to date. You want to monitor internal and external environments to determine if additional information is required for employees to perform tasks. Inform employees when changes occur that affect them and distribute updated information when necessary. Now raise your hand. Have you ever heard the phrase, information is power? Great. What that means is the one who has the information has power over the person who needs that information. By withholding information from someone so that they can do their job properly, you're doing them a disservice. And it could possibly be considered a form of bullying. With a world of information in the palm of your hand, literally in the palm of your hand with a, t a, t a tablet or a, a smartphone, you can do almost anything. But if you don't know what you don't know, it can make your career take a downturn. I often find that oversharing can be a burden as well. But it is better to share news and information and not need it than to need it and not have it. One resource that we use is an article that Chelsea just put in the chat pod. It's also on the slide. Several of the steps they suggest on overcoming barriers include eliminating differences in perception, what you understand versus what they want you to understand. Use simple language. Avoid ambiguous words and jargon. Reduce and eliminate noise levels. Noise in the main communication is the main communication barrier, which must be overcome on priority basis. Active listening. Again, listening. There's a difference between listening and hearing. By asking questions, the speaker can ensure whether his or her message is understood and if the receiver understands what was intended by the speaker. The emotional state during communication, one should make effective use of body language to avoid misinterpretation. 
For example, if the conveyor of the message is in a bad mood, then the receiver might think that the information being delivered is not good. Give constructive feedback. The contents of the feedback might be negative, but it should, should be delivered co constructively. And that means don't tell somebody that it's just bad. Make sure that you give them a way to correct it. Proper media selection. The managers should properly select the medium of communication. Simple messages should be conveyed orally, and use of written means of communication should be encouraged for delivering complex messages. So that's, that is the news that you want to use. When you're trying to explain job duties to someone, you want to make sure that you give them all of their responsibilities and priorities and inform the employees of the work that they're going to be responsible for and help them establish the priorities. Instructing people means to accomplish, help them on how they're going to accomplish an assignment. You explain the correct and incorrect ways to accomplish a task. You provide timely and effective feedback about whether task is being performed correctly. Set performance goals, and this helps the employees understand what the goals are and how they are clear, specific, and attainable. And it also gives the employee goals for attainment. And you want to link tasks to organizational objectives. Make sure that you un explain the relationship between the tasks and the overall organizational objectives. Continually rethink job duties and responsibilities as the organization shifts. Knowing the five W's makes things easier for everyone. And what do I mean by the five W's? Who, what, where, when, why. And well, just for good measure, we're going to throw in how. So the things that we need to remember here is listening, speaking, body language, and the written words. This is the, this is the way that you will communicate with everybody. And will you be able to showcase how you meet these criteria with an employer through your actions or examples? Thank you for joining us today. I hope you were able to pick up some great tips. If you want to find out more, you check for the news item about this webinar and watch for other information on our social media channels. You can also check with us at info at IllinoisWorkNet.com. Now we're going to shift to our closing pod. And if you could take a moment, if you did not already, you can download and the handouts that we have, please uh, make sure that you complete our poll questions.